I am Jared Sison. I am your typical middle-aged, good-looking, chubby white boy. I'm also your typical progressive socialist worst nightmare. I fear God, cherish my Second Amendment, and I am a patriot. And I'm not going anywhere. Deal with it. She's out of control. She's out of control. About five days before Donald Trump left office, Morocco awarded him the highest honor they give any head of state. It is essentially the uh, Moroccan Peace Prize. And I want to get this right, so I'm going to read you the copy. Washington, January 15th, 2021. Reuters. U.S. President Donald Trump on Friday received Morocco's highest award for his work in advancing a normalization between Israel and Morocco. In a private Oval Office ceremony, Princess Lala Jumala Alalaoui, Morocco's ambassador to the United States, gave Trump the Order of Mohammed, an award given only to heads of state. It was a gift from Morocco's King Mohammed VI. Morocco is a majority Muslim nation, and it is the fourth, one of four nations, that Donald Trump successfully brokered peace with them and Israel. The others are Sudan, the UAE, the United Arab Emirates, and Bahrain. It took 60 years to broker peace in just two countries with Israel. It happened in the 70s with Carter and in the 90s with Clinton. Carter was successful with Egypt and Clinton was successful with Jordan. Many of you might be too young to remember how important it was that peace be reached in the Middle East. It's very, very important. It was always on the campaign promises from our presidents, but very few were able to do it. Kudos to President Clinton, he was able to do it with Jordan, and Jimmy Carter was able to accomplish that with Egypt. 60 years, too. And here comes Donald Trump, and he brokers four peace deals with four countries in just one term as president. You know, it's funny. Everybody said, Trump is a loose cannon. He's going to have the nuclear codes. He's going to have his finger on the button. And, he, and I saw his hand, his hand shakes. Trump is braggadocious. Trump has a chip on his shoulder. But Trump loves our country. Trump, Donald Trump, ended up being more of a dove than most of the presidents in the last 60 years. Jimmy Carter was a dove. Jimmy Carter didn't do anything. Jimmy Carter ruined our economy. Inflation through the roof. You had to wait every other day to get gasoline. You got gasoline when the last number of your license plate was an even number. You could only buy it on an even day. If the last number of your license plate was odd and you tried to get gas on an even day, you can get arrested. Jimmy Carter destroyed our country, but he was a peaceful man. And it was important for him to broker peace. And he got it done. He was a dove. Donald Trump is a dove. There's hawks and there's doves. Hawks try to get us into every war possible so that the vast military industrial machine can be fed. It's a very hungry machine. It likes to be fed all the time. Trump comes. He's the only president in 50 years that didn't start a war or a conflict. In fact, it's the exact opposite. Donald Trump has wanted to pull our soldiers, our sons and our fathers, out of foreign theaters. He wants to reduce troop presence in all these countries. If we have a troop presence, we've got to feed the troop presence. We've got to make them bullets and ammunition and guns and logistics. And boy, those are some nice government contracts. Over the last 50 years, our country bought into this ridiculous political correctness theme. And the political correctness mantra was, everybody gets a trophy. Everybody's important, no matter how much you produce and how effective you are at what you do. And America? America is not an exceptional country. How dare you say America is an exceptional country better than any other country? That's PC. That's political correctness. And we've been teaching it to our kids for the last 50 years. Ilhan Omar, a refugee from Somalia, fled that country, came to America, and now she's one of the most powerful congresswomen in the United States. She hates America. She hates America for how oppressed it is. I wonder how her fellow Somalians back in her homeland are doing right now. Probably not as well as her. You just can't get a break in America. Ilhan Omar is a classic example of the psychosis of hating the club that would have you as a member. Barack Hussein Obama, he was given the Nobel Peace Prize just eight months into his first term. There was no 
peace during Barack Obama's term, there were fires everywhere. Fires in the Middle East, fires in Korea. In fact, when they were transitioning the presidency, Obama told Trump, you're going to be at war with Korea. Just want to let you know. Do you guys remember the years after 9-11, from 2001 through 2008, and then on through Obama's presidency from 2008 to 2016? Do you remember every couple of weeks, once a month, there'd be a video of Al-Qaeda cutting off somebody's head, lighting somebody on fire, uh, putting them in a cage and dunking them in the water till they drowned? Do you remember those videos? They'd pop up all the time on YouTube. YouTube would take them down. But you can find them on the internet now. I suggest you don't. They're horrific. But we lived in fear as a country. It can't be that long ago. Surely you remember. 9-11 was still fresh in our minds. And every month or so, a journalist, a tourist, somebody was kidnapped and killed. And they videotaped it. And they sent it to us in the States. And everybody was afraid. We thought people were going to come across the southern border and, and maybe take over a school and kill our children. There was no peace during Obama's turn. There was no security against terrorism. Obama was inept. He couldn't do anything about al-Qaeda. And if you remember, when ISIS started to rear its ugly head, Obama said, oh, compared to al-Qaeda, ISIS is the JV team. You guys remember that? Well, ISIS ended up becoming the most notorious, horrific terrorist group in modern history. They were able to start their caliphate. Caliphate is like a holy war. Death to the infidel. The infidel is anyone who is not a Muslim. Essentially, a caliphate says it's time for all death to people who aren't Muslim. Look it up. Caliphate. Trump campaigned on getting rid of ISIS. He said he would do it. Well, son of a what do you know? After one year in office, Donald Trump was able to obliterate the caliphate. So Barack Obama received the Peace Prize, the Nobel Peace Prize, eight months into his first term. Besides the bullcrap about him receiving it for global response to global challenges. Barack Obama received the Nobel Peace Prize because he was the right color. OMG, did that middle-aged, good-looking, chubby white boy really go there? Yes, I did. And before you go thinking that Tommy Boy 2 <laughs> is a racist, let me give you a little bit of background on Jared Sison. I used to teach inner-city basketball. These were 12-year-olds. My son is 12 years old, so I had him on the team. He was the only white boy on the team. Well, in fact, he's half Asian, so there was no white boys on the team. I was the only white person there. I was coach, assistant coach. Every now and then, there would be tussles. And I remember one tussle uh, between the players at a practice in, in particular. There was two guys, and they were, you know, about to get into it. And I got between them, and I, and I talked to them, found out that one, the black kid, um, was calling the other guy racist, claimed, claimed the other guy did something that was racist. I sat him down, and I said to him, hey, look, it, there's racism in the world. I get it. There are people who are just, just going to hate you because of the color of your skin. I said, there's people who just look at me and go, hey, whitey. And that little boy started laughing at that. And there's no way around that. We can't legislate the hearts of people. But you can combat it. And you can combat it by making yourself pleasant to be around. No matter who you are in the world, no matter what your race, religion, creed is, no matter if you like Twinkies or if you like tofu, people want to be around people who are nice to be around. Case closed. Make yourself nice to be around, and it's the best thing you can do to combat racism. I played basketball with a lot of black youth. I was 35 years old. I didn't know how to dribble a basketball. But a lot of black youth and some Hispanic and some, there was a white kid, Chris. Um, that's how I learned to play basketball. I remember Darnell, Tabe, Jabari. Um, and it was tough because they didn't respect me at first. But, you know, when I would play all the time and I hung out and learned, I got some skills. You want to play basketball sometime? I got an awesome low post game. But I can hit that hook shot from about 20 different places on the court. I'm not the great white hope. I'm the great white promise. Yeah, I learned to play basketball on the streets of Paris, California. I got close with some of those young men. I had a little recording studio. I invited one of them in to record a rap, a rap song. I tried to keep in touch with him over the years, but we've drifted apart. But one of them asked me to be his best man at his wedding. I was shocked. When I went to the wedding rehearsal, he had all his homeboys there in the, in the wedding party, all of his groomsmen. 
I was the only white guy, if I remember correctly. And I was the best man. I was honored. My wife of 30 years. Her maid of honor? A black woman. So before you say, Jared, that Chris Farley lookalike is a racist, yo. Think twice. Many of the same people who voted for Trump voted for Obama twice. Hard pill to swallow, but it's the truth. Trump received the most amount of black votes of any Republican president in the last 60 years. Look it up. You probably don't get that news in your mass media either. America is being crushed under the iron cloud of political correctness. It is the most damaging element of our society today. It discourages individualism. It discourages capitalism. It discourages, it discourages exceptionalism. It discourages people to go out and be something so great and so different that everybody wants to be like that person. It has crushed that spirit. PC, political correctness, taught us that everybody should get a trophy. Nobody should have a strong opinion. If you got a strong opinion, keep it to yourself. You have strong principles. You have strong ethics. Don't be judgmental. What, do you want to hurt somebody's feelings? Compromise with everyone. Compromise at all costs. Do not judge. You know why Trump doesn't get props? You know why he doesn't get his due respect? You know why the mass media doesn't report on his hundreds of accomplishments? Besides the fact that he's an outsider. The, besides the fact that the Beltway in Washington hates his guts. Besides that, he's not PC. He doesn't pull punches. He calls it like it is. As a businessman, before the presidency, if somebody wasn't cutting it, they were gone. It didn't matter if they were black, white, women, male. He's a true equal opportunity employer. His crowning achievement as a builder, the Trump Towers in downtown New York City, his building foreman for the entire building was a woman. The guy's not sexist. People have to understand the difference. Because you like women, and you might be a little bit of a womanizer, doesn't mean you're sexist. In fact, you might be biased to women. And like his ex-wife, he gave her power over half of his empire. So I would say that he might be a little clouded in his judgment in giving the women that surrounded him more power than maybe they should have. The socialists, the progressive socialists who hate America, hate our founding, hate our constitution, they love Barack. They love anybody who hates America. Barack Obama hates America. He hates our founding. The constitution is an obstacle. When Barack Obama became president, do you remember? He immediately embarked on the I am sorry I am American and I am sorry for America apology tour. Made me sick to my stomach. As many mistakes and sins that America has committed, and we've committed some, it is still the best chance for freedom and success in the world today. There's not droves and droves of people trying to leave America. They're still trying to come to America. We're so sorry for being successful. We have so much and the rest of the world needs to be brought up and America needs to be brought down. The socialist progressives ate that poopy up. You want to talk about foreign policy? Joe Biden's record on foreign policy decisions is perfect. Perfectly pathetic. In his 2014 memoir, Duty, Former Defense Secretary Robert Gates famously shared his view that Biden, then the Vice President, and previously Chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, had been wrong about, quote, nearly every major foreign policy and national security issue over the past four decades. So you want somebody with a near-perfect track record of making the wrong decisions? You got him. He's your president now. And make no mistake... Joe Biden comes off as that kind, compassionate grandpa type. That boy is a hawk. He's going to grease the palms of every aviation and munitions company that comes a-begging for a contract. You watch. I will be shocked if in four years as president, we aren't plummeted into a war or a major conflict. It's going to happen. Mark my words. And the problem with Joe Biden is, in his advanced years, he has become even more persuadable and purchasable. God bless America. So in closing, while you guys are out and about, or if you're locked down wherever you are in America, when you talk with friends, when you talk with family on the phone, when you meet somebody new, share with them what you know about the Moroccan Peace Prize. Share with them what you know about the four countries, Bahrain, the United Arab Emirates, Sudan, and Morocco, that peace was brokered between them and Israel by Donald Trump. 
in a single year. Let them know this man was a man of peace, a real man of peace. The guy deserves some credit for that. I'm Jared Sison, citizen journalist.